it's super exciting to be a Tesla shareholder, a Tesla investor, because of these incredibly insane business models that the company continues to pursue. And when, every time they conquer one, they look for the next one. So we like to cover ARK Invest and Kathy Wood. Just and of course, institutional analysts, just a little bit. The, <laughs> she's great and uh, they do fantastic research. We cover that quite often. So here's her being interviewed again. Uh, we can watch this at H HSBC uh, interview here. So let's listen to what she's saying. Elon has announced uh, that, uh, that Tesla will launch its robotaxi service commercially in Austin, Texas in June. That is when analysts are going to have to put into their models what a robo-taxi service is. And it's a software as a service model. Right. Very high margin, 80% plus for the platform companies. Whereas the electric vehicle is 15, 20, 25% gross margin. So we think that robo-taxis uh, will account for 90% of the value of the company in five years. Mm. And we're on record on, on record saying, we believe in, in five years, the stock will hit $2,600. Uh, and that's, that's not even including humanoid robots, which are now moving into the Tesla mm. ecosystem much faster than, we, than even we expected. So more than a tenfold increase uh, just from robo-taxis. So. You're not concerned over, let's, let's call it noise, because of Elon Musk's role with the government, for example, and how that may or may have not contributed to the risk premium of the stock. Yes, I think this is one reason the stock is down 50%. It's, okay. it, it's been cut in half. Uh, and I think this is all very short term. Let me pull in the China factor here. Yes. Into the Tesla story. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the, I think, more common observations that we've heard from analysts in this part of the world is that Tesla in China as a final market currently has a somewhat inferior product compared to the competitor. Is that, is that an argument that you buy? Well, if you look, it depends on what you mean by inferior. So we're looking at the BYD cars, and they are fabulous in terms of, from what we can see, fit, finish, design. If you look at metrics like range and power for a given price, Tesla is still uh, very competitive, if not the most competitive, depending right. on the model of car. Right, right, right. But, There's nuance there. Mm -hmm. Yes, but BYD is, from a cost point of view, moving down the consumer electronic battery cost curve, right. just like Tesla is. So uh, actually, we think it's great. We think competition is great, but more important for new kinds of technologies mm. is scaling those technologies, which both Tesla and BYD are doing. Uh, and when unit growth increases, costs come down even more. Uh, so we think Tesla and BYD are, are both in the lead from a, an EV point of view alone. Right. If you layer in robo-taxi, of course, BYD is not seizing the moment there, at least not yet. Okay, I know I said one last question in Tesla. <laughs> you open what one door. Very quickly, worst case scenario. Let's let's extrapolate worst case scenario. In the event that Tesla does not do well in China, in the slightest event it doesn't, for example, and you point out, of course, that they are still very competitive there, does the bull case still hold up for Tesla if they, say, lose that market? Uh, we do believe mm. that China is very important uh, to Tesla, and okay. I actually think that uh, Elon Musk and May Musk, his mother, mm. are, are sort of ambassadors uh, for They're, the United May States. May Musk is to, a big star in China. Yes, 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 uh, and rightly so. Uh, so, uh, but to answer your question directly, if China were to fail, that would be a, a short-term hit to the stock. Would it take us away from $2,600? Yeah. Uh, no, because the robo-taxi story is much more a function of the Western world where ride-hailing costs are so much higher than okay. they are in China. Wow. <laughs> he did everything he can to just put up a lot of bear cases here for Tesla. Uh, inferior product in China. What happens if you lose China? I mean, they're good questions. Let's go and uh, explore. So let's start off with her, um, uh, her stock price target. So, I mean, I think it's interesting that they're, and I understand why they don't, but she said straight away that that doesn't include Optimus. And I think not having Optimus included in evaluation five years from now, that uh, that's not something that 
I would want to do, but I don't have institutional investors that I have to keep happy. So, you know, uh, different pressures. Um, that said, we are, you know, just months away, like Kathy mentioned, from rolling out robo taxi service in Austin. Whether even if Tesla misses their timeline and we have an Elon time type of moment, we're still within 12 months. And that is such a pivotal moment in shifting the business model for Tesla. Like Kathy mentioned, right now we sell cars. Cars are really expensive to make. It's really hard to make money on cars. Uh, even with you know the advanced driver assistance system that Tesla has with FSD, we're still not making great margins on cars. They're okay. They're you know pretty good in the industry. Uh, they've been trending down. Now perhaps they're going to be trending up. But all of that said, we're still talking about bouncing around, you know, optimistically from mid 30s on margins down to mid teens. And all of that pales in comparison to a business model where you make 70, 80, 90% margins on your software because, or on your product because it's software based and you can just ship the next one doesn't cost you any more to ship than the last one because you send it over the air and it costs you a couple pennies uh, to deliver the software. The software is already built. You've already spent the money. And so every time someone pays you for it, that next one is basically free money um, that flows 100% down to your margin and your bottom line. And that is going to be increasingly where Tesla makes its money as the only player who has really focused on developing FSD software that is scalable to every single Tesla in a Western market in the course of a few years. Like no one believes that Waymo or Uber or any of these other companies is going to scale to millions of units throughout the Western world before 2030. Tesla already has millions of units throughout the Western world or in all of those markets that can, from a hardware and software standpoint, once we achieve this, be turned on to be robo-taxi. And so the monetization capability of that fleet is massive. It's latent potential that is still dramatically underestimated by the street. And uh, when you talk about that, $2,600 seems well within the range of possibilities. I wouldn't say it's completely bearish. I wouldn't say it's completely bullish. I think that is, you know, there are optimistic cases where we're far above that. Uh, perhaps if things take a little bit longer, maybe we'll be behind. But even if we're trending in the right direction uh, in five years, then, you know, maybe that $2,600 price target, it's delayed by a year. Oh my gosh. I mean, how how terrible would it be if we had a one year delay on a 10X in our, in our stock prices. So yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's super exciting to be a Tesla shareholder, a Tesla investor because of these incredibly insane business models that the company continues to pursue. And when, every time they conquer one, they look for the next one. Yeah. And so far everything's trending in that direction, right? We're going to FSD in every country, <laughs> yeah, the United States, Canada, Puerto Rico, Mexico. Now we've got uh, China, FSD is being used there, supervised. And then now, yesterday in the show we did, you showed that actually pieces of it is being um, used now, in Nor is being sold now in Norway, in, in, the, in the Netherlands. 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 Yep. So, you know, these are steps. Now, let's talk about his, uh, his comment that uh, Tesla is seen as inferior. And, um, you know, so... It depends, and I like her answer, it depends on how you look at things. So I know that in China, these cars are getting really, really good, and they're priced lower, and they often are given, uh, offered with different kinds of technology. They're trying to one-up each other, right? My car has this one push, and the, everything swivels, and automatic, uh, you know, got a refrigerator in my car. <laughs> these kinds of things are being offered. So in, in that kind of sense, you might go, these guys, you know, the Chinese cars are so much more... Um, better but at the end of the day what is the number one best-selling car in china it's the tesla model y what's number two it's a tesla model three now if you compare that to that's you know byd selling really 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 low car uh, low price cars like five thousand twenty thousand dollar cars so yes that's true and then 
FSD. I think in general, everybody's agreeing at this point uh, that FSD is so much better than any of the Chinese auto autonomy solutions out there. And so I like the way you said it, which is if you, if the world is switching to autonomy and you have to have autonomy. And so now, which is more important to you, an extra fridge or a car drives itself better than the other cars that can drive themselves. So yep. um, yeah, what's and your thoughts my, about your comp? Yeah. You know, I'm somewhat hesitant to comment on this too much, not being from China, not really having a pulse on the market and the experiences and the culture and all that. Um, but since that kind of is what everyone is doing right now, I'll just give my low value two cents. My impression <laughs> is that that software piece is the differentiating factor that consumers talk about when they say, you know, Tesla's not the best right now. And it was because Tesla didn't have those ADAS features that oh. Yeah, BYD point. and the other companies had that wasn't available. And yeah. so when Tesla yeah. goes from not legally being allowed to sell those features in China and the Chinese companies having a leg up because they can compete on an axis of features that Tesla's not allowed to sell, then yes, that gives them an advantage. When they then are allowed to sell it, and oh yeah, by the way, not only is it as good, it's better then you flip that whole dynamic on its head and now it is the sexiest car that you get the most cultural cachet from buying and it's the best car and it's the best value, then of course. Um, and so I think that's kind of the world where we're headed to. Obviously I'm biased and I'm not Chinese. So, you know, take <laughs> my uh, opinion with a grain of salt, but that's, a good uh, point. that's, that's yeah. where I look at it. Yeah, they, they called it inferior when they were able to offer their advanced ADAS and uh, they didn't think Tesla had it or thought it was worse and now they're realizing oh my god because it's now available there okay so that's kathy wood um i i did think it's funny you know that he's it, it shows how much he missed the point or not that he missed the point like this is the this is the argument and he set up kathy really well that yeah. you know if you're looking at unit sales in china as the thing that you're trying to value the company tesla on in the future it shows that you're not looking at robo taxis and so it gave Kathy the opportunity to come back and say, that's not the business case for Tesla in five years. Unit sales in China is not going to matter positively or negatively to the overall earnings potential of Tesla as a company in 2029 and 2030, that you have to come back to robo taxis. That's where the business model is. And then really you have to, after robo taxis, you have to come back to Optimus, which I think will be a huge factor before 2030 as well. Um, yeah, and, and so people who are trying to make Tesla stock purchase and sell decisions based on unit sales by country, uh, those people are just going to get run over like a freight train. <laughs> Won't matter very soon. So Kathy's uh, fantastic ARK Invest. Uh, again, what she said is 90% of the value of the company in five years is going to be robo taxis. You disagree because you think that, uh, you know, robots will be more than just 10%. Yeah, and cars I, I will think be that, yeah, yeah, by 2030, we'll definitely yeah. be deep into double digits on the valuation that's assigned to Optimus in the total, the total valuation of Tesla. And I agree with you there. We believe in five years, the stock will hit $2,600 at 10x from what it is now. And they know it's not including real human or robots. They'll come in, they'll add it in. But right now, they're just trying to keep it clean. Robo taxis. Okay, so that's uh, Kathy Wood. We got Canaccord Genuity analyst George Gianaricas. He visited Tesla's Giga Texas factory just a few days ago, and he said this: "We toured the Cybertruck line and saw firsthand elements of the future unboxed manufacturing strategy that promises to materially increase production efficiencies. It's hard not to be impressed with how future forward Tesla is, whether it's vehicle design or manufacturing, consistently rethinking the status quo." And then there was FSD. Yes, it was in Austin on a sunny day on a known path, but it was smooth. So it was like just around the, ta the uh, Giga Texas, but it was smooth, zero interventions, great highway merging, no issues. And the new Model Y, we really liked it in person, not to mention the gold cyber cab we saw roaming the Austin campus, future forward. So he actually tested FSD. <laughs> he actually saw the cars. He saw the manufacturing lines. He reiterates his $404 Tesla price target. Exciting. I. I can't, it's, it's hard to think about how insane cyber cab production is going to be. You know, we yeah. heard that line that we're going to be rolling off 
a cyber cab every five seconds. Right now, you know, the model, the best model Y line is 35 seconds. And so it's going to be seven times faster that we're just rolling these cyber cabs off the line. And for him to get to see that in person, he did, I'm sure he it was impressive. Line. Well, he, he saw, he saw whatever cabs. elements. Yeah, yeah, that they're gonna they're gonna put. Yeah. I I just want to know, you know, what insights was he able to get on that? Um, but to zoom out for just a second, yeah, the huge advantage that the Chinese Gigafactory in Shanghai has had up until this point is this, you know, labor force that is extremely conscientious and affordable and if we can have a production facility that we build here in Austin that can out produce Giga Shanghai from a similar to smaller footprint, um, mm. because we finally figured out how to architect the entire production process with as few humans as possible. Mm -hmm. That's that next evolution of manufacturing production technology and capacity. And we desperately need that ability here in the United States. We need to be able to make stuff in mass here in the United States, um, just to protect our own national interests. And I think that the Starlink factory that Elon has already put mm -hmm. up there in Bastrop is an example of this, that we can make stuff here in the United States. We can make a lot of it. We can make it really well. Uh, we can go at scale. We can scale faster than people imagine. And that's an example that kind of flies under the radar for most people, but we're moving from that now back into cars and Tesla's going to be able to compete. You know, our US production of vehicles is going to not only compete with our Shanghai production of vehicles. It's going to exceed our production of vehicles in Shanghai. And that's a huge and incredibly significant geopolitical event. And I think most Tesla investors are going to miss the fact that this is something that has major implications for West versus East mm. world power and military uh, economic competition. And mm that is something that he got a little glimpse of he's excited about it i just wonder if he fully digests the significance of what he saw